Shalom. 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 I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Yahweh, be the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh is the one who the world is going to call God. Yahweh means in the name. Yahweh be the name of the Messiah. Yahweh is the one who the world is going to call Jesus. Ba'ashem, meaning in the name, Rechach Kodash, meaning Holy Spirit, Rechach, meaning Spirit, Kodash, meaning Holy. So I said all praises to Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles, great no stone that will well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. As you can see, the title of this lesson is Two Thirds Will Die in the Land of Their Captivity. You know, and the brother has a scripture. You know, get it. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass. That in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Okay. You see? So, and that's a brother on the comic book, Shalom. But if you see, um, but, but as you see, it, as, as the scripture said, um, in all the land, in that scripture specifically talking about America. So, here in the land of America, two thirds. Of the so-called Negroes, uh, West Indians, Haitians, Mexicans, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians are going to be put to death. They're going to die here. You know. Yep. I'm gonna get this scripture. Um, and I'm getting the scripture for a certain reason. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty, verse sixty. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way where I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and they shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. All right? So, you know, and especially everybody knows how the tribe of Judah got to America by way of slave ships. So, you know, two thirds were brought over here. You know, some two thirds. Well, let me say it like this. Um, what's the name? Um, you know, two thirds of. Uh, Basically, it, Israelite was, Israelites were brought over here to America, you know, and it wasn't only the tribe of Judah that was put on slave ships, you know, but basically what I'm trying to say is, you know, Jake had gotten to America by way of slave ships, you know, and two thirds of Jake here, all right, that are here in America, they're going to be put to death, man, you know, and you'll have to, you'll see, they'll see the land of Israel when they get back, when they get, re, when they get reborn again, you know, in the kingdom. Okay, but um, yeah, I was just you know meditating. You know how Jake was brought over here. You know Jake, like you know, this is the land of their slavery, and they're gonna die here. You know that that's that's something to die in the land of your captivity. That's that that sounds like you know there's no hope for you. Which two thirds are without hope. You know, they they um they're gonna die here. Especially some of them already have died here, but the two but. Specifically, you know, there's more, way more of them that's going to die. Um, you got a scripture? Yeah, I got a quick one because, you know, this is going to show you how the Heavenly Father gets down. Because two-thirds are going to die in, in Babylon, but the one-third, okay, they're going to get delivered out of Babylon. Okay? This is Micah chapter 4, starting at verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Like a woman in travail, for now shall thou go forth out of the city. The city represents Israel, Jerusalem. Okay, it says, and thou shalt dwell in the field. The field represents the world. You can link that up with Matthew 13, starting at verse 37 on down. All right, it says, and thou shalt. So that goes to show you that we were scattered. We went. We left the nation of Israel or the land of Israel, if you will, and we got scattered amongst the four corners of the earth, man. Okay, and the Lord is going to gather His elect from the four corners of the earth. But the main deliverance will be out of Babylon, just like how the main judgment will be out of Babylon. Okay, the, the scriptures say, "Look upon all the works of the Most High, for they are two and two. You know, evil is set as against good, life against death. So is the godly against the sinner, and the city the sinner against the godly." You no, know, roughly paraphrasing, I believe that's Sirach, thirty third chapter. You know, the Most High, he's balanced. All right, so two thirds they're going to get destroyed in Babylon. You know, which is the place of the main judgment. And the one third, they're going to get delivered out of Babylon, which is a place of main judgment. Let me let me finish off on this. It says, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shall thou be delivered. There the Lord Yahweh shall redeem thee 
from the hand of thine enemies. Okay, so it says from there, the one third, they're going to be delivered from Babylon. Okay, it goes to show you that we were brought into Egypt, you know, uh, by way of ships. Okay, if you can receive it, America is known as Egypt. It's also known as Sodom and Gomorrah. It's also known as Rome. It's also known as Babylon. Okay. Um, this is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. The last for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. You know, when the time coming, well, we're in the we're in the beginning of Jacob's trouble now. All right. And further when it furthers on and more into the time of Jacob's trouble, more Jake's gonna die. You know, but 144,000 to one third are gonna be saved out of it. And you got some of the elect that um are already, you know, they they uh Went back to the spirit world already, but you got somebody like waiting to get back up out the grave, you know. So that hundred four for thousand and one third, man, they, hey, man, they're gonna get delivered out of here. But um, they, well, matter of fact, now I'm looking at it. Oh, man. Now I'm looking at the scripture. This is Jeremiah chapter thirty and verse three. For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity, the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. You know, so that's gonna start with what? That's gonna start with the um, that's gonna start with uh, the hundred forty-four thousand and one third. You know, because when Yahweh Shai comes back. He's not saving all of Israel this time. You want, can you grab um? It's in Second Ezra's ninth chapter. Like as a wave is greater than a drop. Come on, so go. It's a lot, kid. Let me. You good? You good? Take your time. But um, matter of fact, let me get the scripture right here. This is Matthew chapter twenty-four. Um. Starting at verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That sign of the Son of Man in heaven is talking about the chariots. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn. They are mourn because of much destruction. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You know, that's talking about Yahweh Shah coming back with the chariots. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. You know, and his elect, all Israelites, man, because we know Israelites are the only one going to receive salvation. All right, and they elect that, that they elect are not only here in America but all over the earth. You know, but see when so how so how was Jeremiah thirty chapter thirty verse three going to start when the Lord said He's going to bring again the captivity of His people? I Meaning, you know, that's that's going to start with a uh, with a remnant. You know, that's why I've got that scripture in Matthew twenty four and thirty one because that elect is not all Israel. It's just a, it's just a select few, bro. If you have that preset, huh? And to select it to back you up, the scriptures say, uh, the Israel of the Most High, you know, the Israel of God. So there's an Israel, and then there's an Israel of God, you know. Yahweh also, also said, Not all them are Israel, not all them that are, are, are of Israel are of Israel, you know, roughly paraphrasing, you know, but nevertheless, this is um. And I got another quick precept to back the brother up because he said the elect is coming out of Israel. It's is Isaiah 44, 45 and 4, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Okay, so it says Israel mine elect. And also when you read Revelation, the 12th chapter, it tells you, it it tells you who the elect is. It tells you that they're coming from the 12 tribes of Israel, you know? And then when you go, oh no, Slaki, Revelation. Seven, Salakia, Revelation seven. All right, and then when you go to verse nine, it talks about the innumerable multitude, you know? So Israel scattered amongst all the nations, like the brother brought out, Salakia though. This is second Ezra nine, starting at verse 13, or Salakia 14. Then answered I and said, I have said before, and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Verse 16, like as a wave is greater than a drop. You see, here's the scripture to go with that. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 3. There will be many created, but few shall be saved. You see, here's another one. 
This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And uh, starting at verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, and the one the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. So how shall I come and um, save everybody this time, you know? He's going to uh, come and just save a few. When the Lord comes back, he ain't taking everybody with him. Only, only a remnant, man. You know, so as for the rest of two thirds, put to death. You know, they're gonna have to die. Um, this is Ezekiel chapter seven and verse three. Now was the end. matter of fact, I'm gonna read. Ark, if you want to read it, it's up to you. If you want to read it, let me read it. I can read it, but I got a quick precept. All right. This is uh, Jeremiah three, starting at verse fourteen. It says, "Turn, O backsliding children, say of the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city." And two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Okay, so the Lord, like the brother said, the Lord is not coming back to save everybody. You know, out of the old Egypt, all of Israel got delivered out of the old Egypt. You know, but out of this new Egypt, only the only the Israel of God, if you will, you know, will get delivered. The elect. All right, you want me to get Ezekiel seven? What chapter? I mean, what verse? Uh, from one to nine. Huh. Matter of fact, not from three to nine. Come. Ezekiel 7, verse 3. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and I will and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus be it. Go ahead, go ahead. Nah, I was gonna keep reading. Come on, go ahead. You got it. You want me to keep reading? Just the brother Chappelle, Shalom. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Read verse five real quick. Come on. Verse five. Thus saith the Lord, power of Israel, and evil, and only evil, is behold, is come. Yep. Meaning what? Bad times are here. You know? Hey, man. Jacob's trouble. It's here, man. It's here. Oh, shit. It's here. But um, Jacob's trouble is here, man. But as verse 3 and verse 4 is going into, you know, the Lord's going to judge Israel for all that wickedness. All the time these niggas been uh, uh, committing adultery, killing each other, smoking, etc. Even in their past lives, man, all the wicked stuff they, they eat in pork, don't want to repent. They don't They want to keep celebrating wicked holidays, want to get lineups, all that, man. The Lord going to get them, you know. Um, and Lord ain't gonna have mercy on on, on these on these Jacob. It's gonna judge them, you know. Come on, keep going. Verse six: An end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Yep. That, that's that's that precept is what we just read Jeremiah thirty and seven. You know that, hey man, Jacob's trouble is here. You know people. Let me get the scripture. This is Numbers. Um, this is the book of Numbers, chapter twenty three, verse nineteen. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken it, shall he not make it good? You see, so it's here, man. The Lord said it's gonna happen. Jacob's trouble is officially starting. It's officially starting, man. Um, you have a precept? Uh, I, can, I can continue reading if you want me to. Uh, come on, go ahead. Just break it down. Verse seven, the verse eight, Salakia. Verse it says, "Now will I surely pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations." So like the brother brought out, you know, you Jake's going here again in lineups, you know, you eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Okay. You want to follow after idolatry. You want to serve idol gods. You want to do everything wicked under the sun. The Lord's going to recompense you for all your abominations. But for the elect, the Lord's going to recompense his elect for their righteousness. Okay. Verse nine it says, in mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. So the Lord's not going to have pity on you people who don't want to get right. Because back going back to second Ezra, the ninth chapter, it says what? That those that despise the ways of Yahweh Shmuel which is you two thirds, you're gonna know death by pain. If you want me, if you want me to, I, I can grab that. If you want me to? Yeah, let's look. you know, this is Second Ezra, chapter nine. 
and verse nine. Then shall they, I'll start at verse seven, matter of fact. Second Ezra is nine and seven. And everyone that shall be saved shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Referring to the elect, verse nine. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Man, I want to look up that word pitiful really quick, because the Lord said he's not going to have pity on you, all right, for those of our people who don't want to repent, okay? <laughs> Man, it's pit this is the word pitiful, all right, from the Google definition, it says deserving or arousing pity. <laughs> So you're going to want to, so basically the judgment that's going to come upon you, people are going to look at you and be like, you know, dang, that's, that's pitiful. You know, like they're going to want to have pity on you, but the most I said, he will not have pity upon you. Okay. This is uh, verse nine. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Right. You know, you two thirds, you out here living it up in Babylon. Okay, you got a lot of two thirds, they sold out. Okay, well, if not, really every two thirds sold out, to be honest, because selling out really just means that you want to take on a different way other than the ways the Yahweh Shah. All right. Um, your screen went dark. It says, um, and and have not known me. You can link that up with first John two and four. All right. You have to keep the commandments to know Yahweh about Shemel Shai. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet a place of repentance was opened unto them, understood it not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Yep. Hey, the second Ezra 16 and 8. The mighty Lord sent the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? The Lord the one goes into that. That scripture actually goes like heavy, man. Real heavy. You know, and it can also be seen as, um, it can also be seen as, uh, you know, regarded now and in the coming time, you know, because if, if you think about it, you know, the Lord going to send uh, plagues in Jacob's trouble. But even now, America is being played in different things in different people around the world. I've heard some two thirds of the world or some people, some worldly people say that they don't even watch the news because it's depressing. Brother put up a scripture. This is Psalm 33, starting at verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Calm, calm. Yeah, Paul. So calm. that alone should make you fear the Lord. You know, the fact that the Lord has the planet Earth hanging on nothing, <laughs> that should make you fear the Lord, man. You know? Right. Um, this, uh, Was uh, it's not, I thought it's like I got a scripture in mind. You want me to keep reading on Ezekiel 7? Um, kind of, you know, break it down though. Kind of. Ezekiel 7, starting at verse 8. I read it again. Now will I surely pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways and recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways. And thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. So you're gonna know that Yahweh Bashim al was the one that smote you in that day. I Meaning the Lord is the one who's judging you niggas out here, man. Lord willing, he has mercy upon us, man. All right. This is second Ezra 16 and 17. What was me? What was me? Who would deliver me in those days? You know, and for the prophet Ezra said that, you know, which also proved reincarnation. All right, but um Worldly people, especially these worldly jakes, are gonna feel like that when this when stuff really starts hitting the fan. You know, you're gonna be you're gonna see that what was you, these worldly jakes are gonna have that what was me spirit. Who's gonna deliver them in those days? The, these worldly jakes gonna have that man. But um, the Lord ain't gonna take them out of it, man. You know, the this time is judgment time. You know, judgment time. This is I got another scripture in mind. Well, I got an aspect. Or something that's gonna happen during the time of Jacob's trouble. Amos, the fifth chapter, 
starting at verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as, as if a man did flee from a lion and a, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. You know, so these people, it ain't really going to be escape for these people. You know, you run from one uh, uh, hardship or trouble, they're going to run away from one hardship or trouble right into another hardship or trouble. An example of that is, um, say you got a pack of just wild people just chasing you, guns and all that, you know, running from that, running from them, right into a, um, let's 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 say right into a abandoned building or some type of some type of building or store, and you got a whole uh, pack of hungry, wild, savage dogs, you know, just waiting to just eat somebody, or anything, you know. That's that's just an example. Okay, because hey, lawlessness is coming, and, I, and this is especially in America. Lawlessness is coming, all right. Death, a whole lot, of, a whole lot of death is coming. Famine is coming, all of that. But you know, as for the elect, the elect ain't got nothing to worry about, really. Yep. You know, even if they get put to death, you know, once one, one, once they, you know, get put to death, then what? You, they, we just, just waiting to come back, man. You know. You let just hold on and endure to the end. You know, that's how you want to be saved. That that's what Yahweh I said. But you know, Yahweh I said that if you you know, he that shall he that endures to the end shall be saved. You know? But um there's different aspects of things that I really actually want to get real quick. Um second just fifteen. Uh, second verse 15 and 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Here you go. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Right. Second verse 16, uh, verse 7. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. And the mighty Lord sent the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Right. You know, the mighty Lord is the one sending these plagues. You know? Um, you know, the Lord is in control of. All the bad times, all the good times, you know. The Lord is the one that causes that to happen. So, Lord is Lord about to really send judgment on. It. Hey, hey, man, because people are gonna start seeing stuff right here that they've never seen before. You know, they're gonna see new created beasts. You know, they're gonna see they're gonna see all this type of stuff, man. Let me um. I don't really gotta, you know, what's his brother? Yo, let me get the scripture now so that I'm gonna say. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and it shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, my people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. All right? The ones that's written in the book talking about the elect. Okay, so a time of trouble. You know, Esau puts out different movies about it. You know, Esau puts out different movies regarding um the different uh cause, cause Esau, you know, Esau listens to the prophets, things like that, you know. But Esau has these different movies out based on like some so actually sometimes Esau does movies that are, you know, kind of based on the scriptures, you know. They live they got Bible movies out, but then again they also have these other movies out, for example, Bushwick, you know. So these at least know what's going to happen. They know what's going to happen, you know. But um, but 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 you see the thing is, you got Jake's in the world, like like Jake has a chance to repent. But you got the the elites know and believe that this stuff is going to happen more than a Jake who repentance is open to, uh, will believe, you know. So that's actually um interesting man you know your own it, it's like it's like every it's like it's like you in a room trying to give it's, it's like you're in a room trying to give a gift to uh to one person and any and everybody else in the room can't give it can't get that gift except for that one person and that one person that uh you get you can get a gift to or you have or you have the gift meant for don't want it you like dude you know but that's jake for you uh. That's the thing too. Like a lot of times, 
the heathen be out on the highways and byways will be out on the highways and byways. The heathen, they'll be the ones that want to inquire. You know, you could tell it. Now you do got some Jake that want to inquire. Don't get me wrong. But you you could tell Jake, the spirit from a heathen from a Jake, because the heathen, they'll be interested. Jake could just walk his simple on that simple ass right on by, you know. <laughs> or even bump up some Right. I was saying, like, you know, Jake just walked right by on the highways and byways, man. You know? But the heathen, they'll be quick to, you know, inquire. That's why the Lord said if these miracles had been in, done in Tyree, you know, they would have they would have been they would have repented. Let me let me see if I can find that scripture. Lord Come on, but but yeah, man, these two thirds are gonna literally die over here in America. In America, man, and, and all of them may not. All of them may not die by the missiles. No. Yep. Go ahead. Up. This is Matthew 11 and 21. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been in, done in Tyre and Sidon, they have repented. They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> you know, so it goes to show you the heathen, you know, they would love to uh, serve you how about shot if they had that opportunity. But it's not for them, you know what I'm saying? As far as right now, in the kingdom, they'll serve the Lord. But as far as right now, they don't, you know, they, it can't happen right now. But two thirds, you know, Jake could just walk right by, you know. Yep. That's the point, though. But, um, this is Ezekiel 33 and 33. And when this cometh to pass, the Lord will come in, shall they know that the prophet hath been among them. Yeah, man. Hey, the doors are, it's because. You know, for the elected, understand it. Um, you know, doors of repentance ain't always gonna be open. You know, so once they close, it's like, yo, you can't, cause you know, brother. And I even say yeah, this is good. This goes to me too, but um, the doors of repentance are about to close, man. You know, cause when you slip, you know, you want to repent. You know, ask the Lord for forgiveness. But um, matter of fact, that's 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 going to something else. But basically. You know, Jake won't have a chance to repent once the doors of penance are closed. Jake can't be like, oh, because Jake is, oh, it's almost like, it's kind of like Jake, Jake is used to seeing the prophets out there on the highways and byways. So once the, so once the uh, internet gets shut down, once the prophets ain't out there no more, you know, and, and stuff start hitting the fan, Jake, they're going, and, and Jake start catching, how they going to call on the Lord, the Lord ain't going to hear him, you know. Jake should have listened, should have listened while they had time. You know, but to a hey, two two matter of fact, let me get let me let me get these two precepts real quick. This is I can get the one for you. Yeah. Um, this is Ezekiel two and three and and wait one second. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation, and have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. Rebel means not listening to authority. The Lord commanded the Israelites to um, keep his laws. You know? Uh, and look, this is, but as, as scripture said, you know, the, the Israelites are, 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 are rebellious. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahweh, Shai, Mashiach, our Lord. You see? So, the, so and sin is breaking the law, that's the commandment. So what do these two-thirds have to look forward to? Death. Right. Being put to death. To die. You know? This is, you got a scripture or something? I was just going to quote that second edge was nine. Now shall they be in Beautiful case which now have abused my ways. Right. Um, this is Second Ezra chapter eight verse fifty. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. You see, so death, famine, imprisonment, everything negative Esau can do to do to Jake. It's gonna happen. You know. But um, I mean, two thirds deserve it to be honest. You know, they, they they deserve to be uh they deserve to go through that hell 
because look, they've been living up lifetime. Matter of fact, let's let's, let's get some examples real quick. I got I got one. I got one. It's Jeremiah. Bear, bear with me. I got Matthew 23 after you. I mean, think about it, man. Two thirds of our people sold out. Yeah, I was shy, man. How how much more wicked can you get from that? How much more wicked can you get from that, man? You sold out the Lord, man. But that was the portion given unto you. Because Yahweh Shai did say, it must needs be that offenses come, but woe unto that man whom the offense cometh through. Roughly paraphrasing. You know? So somebody got to be the two-thirds. Lord willing, we are part of the 144,000 or the one-third, you know? Anything else but a friggin' someone slated for destruction. All right. This is Jeremiah chapter 16. And um, verse starting verse eleven. Then shall they all say unto them, Because your fathers have uh, forsaken, be, hold on. yeah. Jeremiah sixteen, starting verse eleven. Then shall they all say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith Yahweh, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law, and ye have done worse than your fathers. For behold. You will walk, you walk everyone with the imagination of his heart, of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land to a land that you know not. Neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall you serve with the gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. You see, so Jake been evil, man. Two thirds been evil. Wicked Israelites been evil ever since like the ancient world, you know. That's part of the reason why we got cast out of the land of Israel, you know. And now you got Es you got Esau in there. Esau over in, in, in Jerusalem. You got Esau in Jerusalem, man. You got oh, the vile, most vile um, heathen in the land of Jerusalem, living, acting like he's us. You know? But let me get the scripture real quick, because I know, you know, well, let me just get it. Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. You know, so I got that, that was that was the point regarding that was a uh, I got that scripture to get a point to basically back up the point about um you know Esau pretending to be us. I got one to back you up. A quick one. Zechariah nine and six, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. So that bastard dwelling in Ashdod is, is you heathen, man. You devil. Esau eat him. Okay. And you got them uh you got them Ishmaelites in our land too, you know, but mainly you Edomites, man. You Amalekites. You're dwelling in Ashdod, which is a seaport city in Israel. Okay. Come on, this is um right now you're getting scriptures on um you know proving how you know bad Jake has been in the past. Nehemiah chapter um yeah Nehemiah chapter nine starting in verse thirteen thou camest down also that says thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai and spakest with them from heaven and gavest them right judgments and true laws good statutes and commandments and made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant, and gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised them that they should go that they should go on to possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. But they and our fathers have dealt proudly and hardened their necks, and have been, and not and hearkened not to thy commandments, and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in the rebellion appointed the captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a power ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsook them not. Um, yea, when they had made them a molten calf, and said, This is thy power that brought thee up out of Egypt, and had wrought great provocations, yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness, the pillar of cloud departed. I'm gonna jump down. Um, Man, you should keep reading. Matter of fact, I, 
You should keep reading. Because that's heavy right there. Because during, during all them times where the Lord is showing his mercy and his graciousness, you had wicked niggas scoffing and mocking against Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Caleb, you know, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Did the Most High bring us into the wilderness to kill us? You know what I'm saying? To starve us to death? It's the same two thirds coming back in the same spirit. Matter of fact, that's why in Deuteronomy, the Lord, <laughs> hey man, the Lord told Moses, you know, hey, after you die, these same wicked ass niggas, they're gonna go and they're gonna go whoring after other gods, man. All right. Now, don't, don't, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I wasn't once an idol worshiper too, you know, back in the world. Okay. If you celebrated birth, you celebrated your birthday, you celebrated Christmas, Halloween, da da da, you're worthy of death, man. All right. So now, you know, but that's the difference, though, between the two thirds and the one third. You know, Lord willing, we be a part of the one third. But nevertheless, I wanted to get this precept really quick. This is Deuteronomy 32 and verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them and I will slack you. I'll start at verse 19. And when the Lord saw it, man, I, I got to start at 15. Slack you. Slack you. Deuteronomy 32 and 15. But Jeshron waxed fat and kicked. Thou were waxing fat, thou were grown thick, thou were covered with fatness. Then he forsook the pop, forsook the most high which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And that's what happens with our people. You know, when shit goes sweet for them, they forget about Yahweh Bashim Verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, they sacrificed unto devils, not to the most high, to gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not, of the rock that begat the, thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten the power, the most high that formed thee. And when the Lord Yahweh saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Okay. So that's the problem with two thirds of our people. They lack the faith in Yahweh Bashem al Shai. That's why in Hebrews, the fourth chapter says what? Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. All right, here's, you got it. Here's the uh, 926, you know, well, cause if you read up before that, it talks about, you know, how the Lord has done all these things for the children of Israel, man. But let's see what happened. Nehemiah 9 and 26. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs and slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn, the, turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocations. You see? Jake been, diso Jake been disobedient, man. Think about it. The prophets come, the prophets come speak to you. All right? Moses came and spoke. All right? Yahweh came and spoke. The apostles came and spoke, you know, and, um, you know, and the prophets are back again today speaking. All right. And what has Jake done all throughout the times? Not listen, be disobedient and keep doing their wickedness. You know, Jake has done that through all them times, man. You know, so it, it, it's, it's got to be a judgment. You know, there's, there's got to be a judgment for him. This is like, but in the kingdom of heaven. This is what's gonna happen. It's Isaiah chapter 60, verse 21. My people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever. The branches of my plants and the work of my hands, and I may be glorified. So in the kingdom of heaven, all the Israelites are going to be righteous. All right. That's right. But on this side, they're gonna have to die. They're gonna have to they're gonna have to die, man. Because you got two thirds on um, they they they're gonna take them chip, they're gonna take that chip, and that's that's gonna be in them, and Esau, you know, be able to control them and things like that, you know. And then brothers at the camp, all right, were uh, saying how, how how can you repent if, you know, you got nanobots inside of you, you still make you feel one way, et cetera, you know, controlling you, man. They, they, how, how how can you repent? You can't repent, you know? Right. So don't take that microchip, man. There's no there's no repentance for you, all right? But, um, but yeah, man, um, don't, don't take the microchip, man, and all the two-thirds to do it, they're going to die. You know, because two thirds definitely gonna take that chip, all right. And, they def and, and we know that we know the result of what's gonna happen to those that take the chip, the missiles. You know, so two thirds are gonna have to die here in the land of America. They're gonna die right with America, because 
America is going to it's going to be a lake of fire. You know, it's going to be like a lake of fire in America after the missiles hit. You know, but um but yeah, that's the, uh matter of fact, let me just get this. I got a priest up after you up. Yeah. It's Isaiah 13:19 in Babylon from come from Hebrew word babal meaning confusion in America you have a lot of confusion. In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, these excellency shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. The wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of both for creatures. The owls shall dwell there, and satire shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in the desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So there you have it. America is going to be after America is destroyed. It um, it's not going to be inhabited. Only desert creatures are going to be here. Uh, God, this is Matthew. I'm going to the book of Matthew 23. Matthew 23, starting at verse um 27. It says, actually, let's start at verse 29. Matthew 23 and 29, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the, sepulcher, the sepulchers of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye then up then measure of your fathers. Okay, so that's basically them same wicked niggas, them same scribes and Pharisees that were coming up against Yahweh Shah is them same wicked two thirds back in the ancient world that were killing the prophets, slaying the prophets, you know, scoffing and mocking at the prophets, man. Okay, so he said, fill you up the measure of your fathers, man, you know, because they are their forefathers coming back in the reincarnation. Verse 33, ye serpents, ye generations of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This generation referring to, to two-thirds of our people in this present time. It says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not, meaning they rejected the ways of the Lord. You know, the Lord stretched out his hand, he had mercy on them, but they still rejected his ways. It says, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and, and for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You know? And I got this quick one. This is Acts chapter 7, starting at verse uh, 51. It says, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart. Meaning they're uncircumcised in their mind. They're uncircumcised in their spirit. And that's why the Lord said in Jeremiah 9. Let me get it real quick for edification's sake. All right. Jeremiah 9 and verse 25. Behold, the days come, stay of the Lord, that I will punish all them that are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are the uttermost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and the house and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in their heart. OK, and it even tells you back in the law, I believe it's in Deuteronomy where it says circumcision is that of the heart or no, it says um, circumcise the foreskin of your hearts, you know, roughly paraphrasing. It's, I think it's back in Deuteronomy. I'm not going to read the scripture, but I just want to get it for edification. All right. This is uh, Deuteronomy 10, 16. All right. That's the that's the precept right there, you know. But nevertheless, this is Acts 7 and 51. It says, he's stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do ye. OK, going back to what Yahweh Shai said, fill you up then the measures of your father. Verse 52, which of the prophets have your fathers not, Saki, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one. 
of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Going back to what I said earlier in the spirit, they betrayed and they murdered Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. It says, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Right. You, you receive the tables of the two tablets of stone, the 10 commandments. You receive the law by the disposition of, of uh, angels. All right. The scriptures talk about how the, ta the two tablets of stone were written by the finger of the most high, meaning that you had the laser beams from the chariots, write The uh, 10 commandments on those two tablets of stones, man. All right. And it says that they still didn't keep the law, you know, and now, like I said earlier, you know, we were in that same stead, but the difference is we came out of that, man. Through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shai. Verse 54, it says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, so the, the wicked ass niggas, when Stephan was cutting them up, they was like, oh, we're going to get him. You know, that's what they was doing. It says they were cut to their heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth, man. All right. But that's why your destruction is going to be full of gnashing the teeth. Since you wanted to gnash at the prophets. Lord going to make you gnash in your destruction, man. And it says, but he being full of the Holy Spirit looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of the Most High and Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand of the Most High and said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Most High. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. So when he said that, they was like, ah, you know, on some wicked shit, man. Okay. And you really, and believe it or not, you really do have Israelites out here that are that wicked, man. All right, they want nothing to do with Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. And that's why the Lord don't want nothing to do with you niggas, man. All right. You really do have Jakes out here that give brothers a hard time because they know what we do. They know we push the word of the Lord. You got Israelites out here, man, that do not want to hear the word of the Lord at all. They despise it. But that's why you're going to know death by pain, man. And you niggas fucking deserve it, man. All right. But nevertheless, it says, and said, um, and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And that's the point right there. Saul was, a, was, was amongst one of the scoffers too. But Saul, but Saul repented. You know, that's the difference, man. We were once wicked back in the world, but we repented of it, man. And that's what the Lord is requiring, repentance. All right. Um, it says, and they stoned Stephen. Calling upon, it says, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon the Most High and saying, Lord, Yahweh Shai, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep, you know, because some of them same men that betrayed the Lord, you know, they repented. And you can read about that in Acts, the uh, second chapter. OK, I'm just going to get it for edification's sake real quick. I'm just going to go straight to the point. This is Acts 2, starting at verse. um. 36 it says therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that the most i have made that same yahweh shai whom ye have crucified both lord and mashiach now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of yahweh shai mashiach for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy spirit okay so that's a point on that right there you know so some men who turned their back on the Lord and, you know, betrayed the Lord, you know, they repented from that, man. Apostle Paul being a, a, a prime example. Point, though. Good con. Um, yeah, that's, that's really the, uh, you know, the lesson. I don't really have the scriptures right now, but. Con. Uh, but, yeah. So it's with that, all praise is our glory. Belongs to Yahweh. Bashem, Yahushua, Bashem, Kapadash. Gosh, that will honor the elders and apostles of the millstone never well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.